First of all, let me introduce myself properly. My real name is Arthur Johnson. But, you know, in the neighborhood, they call me Weez. I mean, Coach Weez, Weez. I'm basically from Brooklyn, New York. Marcy Projects, shout out to the hood. Uh, Best out Brooklyn, if y'all don't know. That's where Jay-Z grew up at. Uh, Memphis Bleak. A uh, whole, whole lot of people. We get into that, though. But uh, currently in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Um, I used to be the bus driver in the city. Now I'm transitioning to being a mailman, working in the post office. Uh, I help kids out. That's like my main goal and focus is to help kids out in basketball. So I train kids in basketball, no charge, no fee. Uh, I met him last year doing a uh, back-to-school giveaway. Real, you know, real good dude. So I told him I wanted to be on his podcast, and poof, made it happen. Yeah, so we were talking about that a little bit. Um, we started in April of 2022, and it just started off as a reason for me to just fuck around with my friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Joke around. But then, like I said, when we did the back-to-school shit, it was like, all right, like, this is, <laughs> this is I, I, I'm in a room with bigger, bigger um, characters than I expected to be. Yeah. So when I seen the potential, we really had to take a step back and rebrand a little bit. And I had to make sure that we were, had a studio we were comfortable in because we didn't really have that. We were just recording anytime we had a chance. We sit on the couch and just fuck around. Yeah, just do it. That's how, I mean, that's how the magic happened. That's how it's supposed to happen, man. I mean, I appreciate you for having me. This is a dope setup. I appreciate you, know you finally coming out. Yeah, we <laughs> trying to set this up for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to things here, pop you up, know. you know. But we're here now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I appreciate you. Um, let's start off in in Marcy Projects, or, or let's start off in in Brooklyn. Okay. Where where you grew up at? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in uh, Marcy Projects. Like I said, that's where Jay Z from. Uh, Myth Bleak. Uh, Tata. Uh, Stan Burrell. He just came home. Welcome home. Uh. I'm doing 30 years, 30 plus years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I grew up in my neighborhood. It's kind of funny. You know what I mean? Because they got two sides. They got Jay-Z side. Then they got my side, which is the Stan Burrell era. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So when I grew up, I, was, I wasn't really in the street per se. I was a basketball guy. So I always was a two-sport football, basketball. You know what I'm saying? But when you grow up in that environment, you know, things change. So... That's basically how it, uh, I got to start to be where I'm at now. I was uh, I was getting money. I was wilding. I was, <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I was into them streets, but God bless me. I ain't never been to jail. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've been arrested a few times, but I ain't never been to jail. Like did a bit or any of that. Uh, speaking of Jay-Z and Tata, his, uh, Tata little brother, shout out Cool V. We call him Cool V. That's my dog. That's like my best friend. I grew up with him since I was, since I was little, since public school. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So when y'all see me with the, with the celebrities and all that, that's blessed. That's blessed on do my guy. You know what I'm saying? Vaughn, shout out Vaughn, cool V. Yeah. So guy. it's the this is just the the short list that we starting with. You you get deep with the yeah yeah with yeah. the shout outs. Yeah yeah yeah. And that's yeah. everywhere you go because that's just authentically you. That's who made you. That's who you grew yeah, up yeah. with. So you, Marcy made me. You always show in love. Me, yeah. You know what I'm saying Marcy made me <coughs> see the bigger picture. It ain't. It wasn't only about me. You know what I'm saying. Like I said, I got money. I did the bang outs. I did. I wowed out. You know what I'm saying God bless me. Never been hurt. Never did that. Uh, basically. When I played basketball from junior high school all the way to high school, I was starting. I was nice. I wasn't always like that, but I was nice. And uh, were you undersized or was oh, it? Yeah, always. Yeah. I always was the littlest dude everywhere I went. But my heart was bigger than everybody, right, so yeah. so that what made me pick apart from everybody else. Now I'm saying that's how I met my guy Taj Gibson. Shout out! He just re-signed to the Knicks this year for a one-year deal. Shout out my dog. Now I'm saying. Like the list goes on. Is that the team you grew up rooting for? Was hell it? no, I hate everything New York. <laughs> <laughs> you one of them. Oh, so man. it's either in New York, it's either for you. For you guys don't know. It's either you're a Giants fan, a Jets fan, or a Mets just... fan, a Yankees fan, a Knicks or a Nets fan, or you're nothing at all. Or you just hate them. What's yeah. crazy is Buffalo <laughs> is actually the. Uh, the football team that got a stadium in New York. The only one, yeah. Since they upstate, upstate New they York. don't count. 
<laughs> it don't count. Like you can tell I didn't even say I didn't say nothing about him because nobody in New York but is rooting for shout Buffalo. Shout out to Buffalo. Those my guys. <laughs> shout out to Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? They the only real facts. So the Giants and Jets are Jersey. Mm-hmm. Mets, Mets and Yankees are Queens and the Bronx. Well, they New York. All right, they get it. They New York. They got stadiums in there. Uh Brooklyn just got a stadium. Everything New York is trash. <laughs> shout out to New York, though. That's what. Shout out to New York. That's what made me, though. I ain't hating on y'all. Get y'all money. My brother is a diehard, bleed orange and blue New York fan. Diehard. He bleeds that. My man's New York. Knicks, everything. Knicks, everything. Everybody except for me, you know. I guess I'm a bandwagon Ghana guy. <laughs> you can't really root for nobody, though, because you rooting for your homies. Yeah, I'm rooting for... I could go for the Knicks right now if I want my brother Cause, on cause there. Because Taj, yeah, yeah, but... but who else yeah. you know in the league? Who else over there? Uh, We got... Shout out to my man Omar Cook. He the... Uh, I want to say he the assistant coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers G team, but I know he in that organization. Shout out Omar Cook. I grew up playing ball against him since I was 12. He played overseas for about 20 plus years. Uh, he got chips over there. Uh, I mean, shout out my guy. Who else in the league that, I, uh, that we know? Uh, shout out. I met Jimmy before through Taj, which I know. You know, Jimmy Butler? Yeah, uh, Joe Kim Noah, all them, Carlos Boozer. All through my guy Taj, you know, it made it happen. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, basketball, basketball saved my life. That's where it's it. where it starts at because that's where we that's how we kind of met. Yeah, basketball, yeah, so basketball. That, let saved, them know how basketball saved your life. Man, basketball. That story. Uh, Not only are you, you, you're a good basketball player, good basketball coach, which we'll get into, but you're also a great storyteller, so I'm just letting you rock. Yeah, yeah. So so basically (laughs) what what basketball is, man, I started started out with football. Let's start there. (laughs) I was mad fast. I was nice in football. Then one day we, you know, you get a bunch of your mans. We go to other neighborhoods, play football against other neighborhoods. I was so cocky with it that nobody couldn't catch me. It was this big, fat dude. (laughs) Cracked me into a gate, like like I was stuck into a gate type joint, and the Made fire you department. Your life? What the fire department had to come get me, cut the gate, let me out. I said, if I hit this jump shot, it's basketball forever. And for back then in the projects, we had the chain nets. Mm-hmm. So when it went in, it was like, yeah. I said, Ching. this is <laughs> this is that noise made automatic. Me, yeah, that noise made me. So what I what I would do was go to the park, sit there, and just watch, watch the nice people. And I'll take a move from him. I'll take a move from him, and I'll practice it mm-hmm. over and over by myself. Nighttime, I used to get beatings, going to house. Where he was at, and I'm practicing, practicing. And then when I realized you gonna miss, mess up. And do all that other stuff, it was all heaven from there. I'm like, I'm going to mess up, but I'm better than half these dudes. So my first game, shout out to Miss Ruthie. She got to be about 80, 90 now, still kicking it. Shout out to Miss Ruthie. She gave me my first shot, BK Stompers. But what she did, she could have ruined my life. So we played in a tournament. It's called Preteen Classic on Monroe and I want to say Marcus Garvey. It's still going on. Shout out to you guys, Kev, Wayne, Bill, all of them. Uh, we played in there, and we played against a team called Brooklyn USA. Shout out my guy, Sheeny. Uh, his daughter right now got a D1 scholarship to St. John's. Proud of you. Keep doing your thing. Uh, we played them. They beat us 124 <laughs> to 24, my nigga. <laughs> 100 point, bro. We couldn't get the ball past she half court. You never see anybody tell the story about losing those games. Man. You always tell the you always see the winners. Yeah. Yo. You always hear from the winners. When you don't hear from the losers. They spanked us. They spanked. That could have ruined all our lives. How many of the twenty four did you have? I had eighteen. I was good. <laughs> I was lit. <laughs> I was lit. I was good. But Can't stop wheezy. Because I had a jump shot. Mm-hmm. I could shoot. Just throw me before I catch real fast shoot. They couldn't stop that. But after they figured out I couldn't dribble or nothing, nah, it was Kurt. Them niggas spanked us. By a buck, but that only made me smarten up and work harder. Know what I'm saying? So that's how that went on the basketball side. But it was crazy. What's your I mean? What's your career high? My career high was 
40 points, 17 assists in high school. Uh, we played against Van Osdell. That's like our rivalry. We used to get punched in high school, too. Man, oh, man. Shout out Ty Beans, Carl, all y'all. Y'all used to chuck me so y'all could say, yo, I had 40. We lost by 40. It was all good. I was a freshman, but I hold my own, though. So yeah, you know how when you play high school sports, you always know about, like, the local legends and stuff? Who's the player you played against that gave you that work, gave you that business? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody? <laughs> Nah, but but uh, but in my uh, that's a, that's another thing in my hood. Shout out to uh, Rome Lucky. That's my guy. He was he was it for us. That was like the guy we go to to watch and and do over. He had a cousin named Roshan Lucky. He was my coach. Mm -hmm. Like he was wherever every anything go down. He played in. I played in. And he was he was that. Know what I mean, but you know everybody everybody got their path and story. Uh, he got money. He uh, he was a real good dude. You know what I'm saying? He helped me. He helped me in basketball in mad ways. Like he always told me I was nice before I even knew I was nice. So, so was he I, the first person that took you under their wing? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. He pretty much took me. I was playing at every hood tournament. I was good because he was that. <laughs> I was good, so I was talking at a little, little. I was talking crazy because I know I had him. You know what I'm saying? He took us everywhere, and I got him a lot of chips. Shout out to Ro, Ro and Rome. Those the two, you know what I'm saying, that had. But then I moved up the block to Fort Green. Another project's real. That's where Taj come from. Mm -hmm. Taj come from Fort Green. Uh, Omar Cook come from Fort Green. Shout out my brother Doyu. Uh, he coaching high school right now. BDA, they doing their thing. He got up. He got about four high school chips already. He just started coaching. So now I mean that that basketball background right there. That projects is. It's known for basketball. They had, uh, if you ever heard of Ed Booger Smith, he they made a movie about him called Soul in the Hole. Mm -hmm. It's my guy, uh, Shaq, Iverson, everybody from the league used to come watch him play basketball. He told them he ain't want. It. Now I mean that's his story to tell, but he he was that dude. We're gonna, like, have, to get, we're gonna have to get Ed on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. he was. Uh, um, they made a movie out of him. Called you Soul ever in the Hole. you ever played down at the Rucker? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but for us it was more uh baby rucker. I mean, that was in Manhattan cuz I was a little dude. Mm -hmm. I was I mean, I was trying to get there, but I yeah. wasn't probably ready. You know what I'm saying? I probably wasn't ready, but You ever go watch the games there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How intense? Uh, how intense crazy. does the, the the energy get there? Uh, it's crazy. They Cuz uh, it's one thing to watch it on like camera, but uh, when but, you there and they yeah. doing the dance, that's where the shake come from, the dance, the uh the get in the park. Oh man, the lines be around the park. If you ain't nobody, you probably watching from outside the gate, having to get in. Uh, I've man. always been a basketball fan because my uncle grew up in the streets and shit, and that was his thing. He played basketball for money in yeah, the streets. Yeah, basketball. Oh, so he'd take me to the park, and then he'd just be out there balling all day, and then he'd be like, yo, let's go get ice cream. Yep. Let's go to the corner store. Because he done one bank. <clears throat> yeah, so I've always been a basketball fan. He always had like the and one mixtapes and uh, yep, yep. all the DVDs from the hood of everybody playing at Rucker Park and all that. So yeah. I grew up watching that kind of stuff. Yeah, Rucker. So when I watch y'all play and y'all do y'all thing out there, it's like, this is this is my childhood. It's nostalgic. So. Yeah. Like, that's where the competitive come in from, New York. I mean, everybody, you know, New York, we talk shit. That's yeah, what talk we shit in order to survive yeah, out there. Yeah, that's what we do. We don't mean no, I mean, see, it's different. People talk shit and then it's disrespect. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you talk your shit, nigga ain't gonna really say nothing about nothing, but I, right, I'm going you gotta get yours. But when it start sucking my and nah, you this, that's good. That's when it get out of hand. Is that that's something you disrespect. teach the kids that you coach right now? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, talk, you gonna talk because it's gonna be. It's gonna be intense moments. <laughs> it's gonna be that time where you're gonna have to show up or show out or back away. You know what I'm saying? So I try to get the kids. Real life experiences. That's what I try to do. So I'm, I would say I'm different. My coaching style is different from a lot of people, and but that's why I win because I'm not hindering nobody. I'm not holding them back. You know when what I'm when did you notice that? When did you notice that your playing days were over and you wanted to transfer over to coaching? Like when did did that come earlier in your life or did you keep trying to chase chase a dream? Oh, by I'm playing? still chasing. I still play. Like I'm. 12. I'm now, dead. you still play to have your fun, but yeah, I mean, like, but, uh, chasing the... When I knew... Uh, like, you always felt like basketball was going to get you out the hood, or did you know yeah, that there was yeah, a, I, another option? 
I always, always knew I was going to do something with basketball, whether it was play or give back. Cause I had, I had my sons at an early age of 20. So I always knew it was go to school or be a father. I could have went to school, but I ain't know how. I ain't tell the coaches that I was having twin boys. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that so you was had twin like, boys at 20. That's yeah, a life changer. That, but... that was a big, big thing with me because my pops wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be a better man from there. So I stayed with my sons. I never went to college per se. You know what I'm saying? But my sons did. You know what I mean? So everything I do transfer to them. So I How old are they now? 21. 21, they yeah. both went to college? Yeah. They play ball? Or? They play ball. My nephew, too. Okay. My nephew, too. My nephew, 20. Uh, he went He went to South Care. He went to Greensville, Bob Jones University. Where your and, boys play at? And they went to Valley Forge. Together? Yeah. Oh, that's fire. But they uh, they said they don't want to play no more. <laughs> but I'm a, my, me and my son going to talk. The one, yeah. he looked just like me. His name Kwali. Shout out Kwali and Tali. You know what I'm saying? He we gonna get him back here. He just said that I wanna go to college if you know. So he still got time. So we're gonna make that happen. So at what age did you so it was twenty years old that you made that decision that you wanna stay back? Yeah, I was um, going Did I you know you wanted to get into coaching or did you just know you wanted to be around the game? I just wanted to be around the game. I really didn't know I was gonna like try to get into coaching until everybody was telling me, like, yo, you should you should coach, you should or can you train my kid? Or can you like? But I'm saying I'm just, I'm just. I go to the park. I see a kid. I'm like, sure, you shouldn't shoot like this. You should bend your elbow tight. Know what I mean, and and just go about my business. I'll now, yeah, you're very approachable, and you are good with kids. Cause even my kids, my kids look at you and they love you. Cause yeah. just the little interactions that they've had with you. My daughter held your hand and walked or around walk the park the with you. You know what I mean? So evolving. No, and man. she's real shy when it comes to people. So the fact that you have that, you have that energy to you. Did you notice that earlier on in life, or was that something that you grew into? Uh, you said you grew up without your pops. You had your yeah, mom? Yeah, I had my mom. Uh, shout she, out my mom. She just passed from COVID when COVID started. Oh, God bless. So, you know what I mean? That's, like, right now where I'm in, the stage I'm in right now, which we'll get into in a little bit, it's kind of like, once she passed, I just got, like, blank. It's just blank for right now. You know what I mean? Because it's still fresh. You know, when you lose your mom. You got to learn how to grieve it. Yeah, and I, and I haven't. My best advice to you is, and I can cut this out if you want to, but my best advice to you is to feel those feelings. Whether you sit with a friend and just have them sit with, there with you and have them just be like, yo, I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling right now, but I need you to just help me feel these feelings. Or doing it by yourself. Because I lost my mom when I was 17. My senior year of high school, Christmas break. So this time of year right now, like... <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it's going up on two. She died in eleven, so thirteen years. Yeah. And it took me ten years to fully grieve it. And for me, if I didn't grasp it, I would have lost my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you're a grown adult man. I can't tell you how to live, but I can tell you that I feel what you're feeling, and you need to feel what you're feeling. You need to go through that and feel what you're feeling. But I don't mean to damper the mood or whatever. No, no, no. It's all good. I mean, uh, I don't know how to. I, I'm kind of handling it, and I'm kind of keeping it pushing at the same time. Because, like I said, I didn't have. I. Oh, man. I was, what, 14 in the streets? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My, when my mom was around. You know what I mean, she used drugs. She got a life together or whatever the case may be, and she came back. What she couldn't give me, she gave to my kids. You know what I'm saying? That made me respect a thousand because I, I seen my pops. I seen them. I said, yo, you got grandsons. Uh, Let's do this. Let's do that. I'm grown. I'm 22, 23. I'm grown. You can't, nothing you really could do for me. You know what I mean? But you got grandkids. Be in their life. Take a part of them. Gave him the number. He never called. He never reached out. He never seen them again. Yo, what's up? You ain't gone? Nah, then my mom's passed. He ain't even reach out to us, and so to me, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I can't say what my kids gonna do. It's nothing. We can't never be nothing. Right. I gave you three shots mm-hmm. to handle your business. At some point, you don't want your kids to go through that. That's you I'm don't saying. want them to feel what you felt. Yeah, yeah. Because, and this is the first time I'm talking about this on the podcast. But my dad has always struggled with drugs, and he's been in and out of jail my whole life. 
he did a eight nine year bid back when I was in eighth grade. Came out when I was an adult with kids and shit already. Mm -hmm. And I gave him the chance. Yo, these are your grandkids. That's what I'm saying. Do your thing. And he kept fucking up and falling back into the same routine. And I took my kids. Yo, and he hit me up like, yo, bring me the kids. Like, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. give you that that luxury, bro. Because I don't want you to. It's gonna hurt me more, and I'm gonna want to rip your face off for hurting them yeah. the way you made me feel when I was growing up. That's what so I'm I feel that, and I, 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 I'm empathetic with you on that. Yeah, like so, I like I don't, I don't have no hard, hard feelings towards them. Know what I'm saying, nah, you, you can't. It's just. I respect myself enough to not let you yeah, let step you, on my face like that. Yeah, to let you go that route. Because ain't no other man. I'm not giving that any other man that luxury, so I'm not going to give it to you. Yes, sir. That's a thousand percent. But now, like I said, my sons, I got I got five kids in total. I got the twins. Mm -hmm. I got Damar and Kamar. They should have been twins. I wow. <laughs> they, uh, they Irish six, twins. They Irish twins. They six months apart, and then uh -huh. I got baby girl. She's seven. Her name's Kamia. So it's Kwali, Tali, Damar, Kamar, and Kamia. Know what I'm saying so, those are like my prized possessions. Like those is, if you do something to them, I'll risk it all. Like type joint. But where I come from is, I'm trying to change that cycle of right. of raising good men, good brothers, whether black. That's why you made the decisions men. you made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You decided everything, not to go to college so you could be an active father. Everything I do, I wouldn't say it's calculated, but I think about. Like know what I'm saying, yeah. I'll be like, all right, if I'm gonna do this. If I'm gonna do this, uh, this might affect this. But if I jump two steps over, it's that, it's thought out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I and that I comes be, from your experience and your your environment you yeah, grew up in. Yeah, the streets, the streets, yeah. the streets teach you like never. You could love like we could have love today, right? But you might not like my friend. Right. So just because he's my friend, don't make him your friend. You know what I mean? So I gotta know how to balance. The and the streets two. don't love nobody. Oh man, they don't. They don't. You get a dollar, I see you. Yo, how you getting more money? Yeah. But I was always, like I said, I always thought about it, right? I'm not going to hate on you. I'm just going to watch and see what you know, how you getting an extra little bit of chicken. Or I might have knowledge for you to be like, yo, bro, we out here together. We running from the cops. If you do this this way, this way, you'll get more money. And, and some people will take it and be like, oh, good looking. We Now, you, yo, if you over there, I ain't really going to say nothing to you because you helped me out. Now, I don't have no problem with right. you. So now I'm saying we cool. So I'll be cool with you. I'll be cool with you. I'll be cool. And they all don't like each other. Is that how you avoided yeah, yeah. going to jail yeah. and avoided problems yeah, in the yeah, street? Immediately. I I always would be friends with them. Yeah. Some of them play ball, right? Or I'll be like, yo, I'm going to play ball. If you put 500, you guarantee to be there. Like, now I'm saying, it's your money. Like, yo, I got 500 on me. I went there. Yo, you was right. Now I'm saying? So now it's like, it's like I'll. I don't take favors for money. Like people will try to give me money and I'll be like, nah. Because I know one day I might need you and I could call you and be like, yo, not to bring it up or nothing, but yo, can yo nah, we each I got you. You did that, you didn't take no bread. Mm -hmm. So that when I see people just go for the money, it's bigger than that for me. I might need you twenty years from now, you might own the whole Lebanon and people can't reach you. I'll be like, why well, I got boy living right here. Yo, what up? Yo, we how you doing? See now I could reach you and they can't reach you. Now they owe me a favor because I reached out to you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. money really is not an issue. Like right now, I don't, uh, my current situation, I won't say I'm homeless, but I don't have a crib. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I went, I went, I just came back from down south maybe three days ago. I had lost my, my apartment because my, my children's mother has me on child support. But you never heard me not one time disrespect her. It ain't about her. It's mm -hmm. about my kids. Now, I mean, I didn't know how to balance that. I was into my feelings. I lost my mom. I'm on child support. I got to do this. I got to do that. But you heard what I first thing I said when I came here. Yo, I applied for the post office. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a wit right now. I walked over here. It's nothing because I know when I do get right, I'm just going to appreciate it more. Everything I get, I'm appreciate. And you've been here before. You've been here before, so you know that it, there's I better days. Yeah. I started with nothing. I came from the projects. When I got a crib, I ran up and down the stairs because I made it. Even though the crib might have not been mine, I'm not on the one level floor sleeping with my brothers and sisters and doing all that. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, right now I'm in a process of just finding me. Like, even though it's, I might not be 
around my kids, but I'm always active. I got uh, I left my phone in the uh, where I'm staying at. I got an iPhone. I call them every day. Mm-hmm. Yo, what we doing? Show me your homework. My sons played a. Uh, I thought it was a violin. It's called viola. This, thought, it's close. It's I close. Yeah. We was arguing. He yeah, said, "Dad, close. I said this is a violin." They just like one one string off or some and shit. He put yeah. his chin on the joint. So yeah. My other son want to play the guitar, and now I mean the twins is finding out what they want to be. Like I said, I can't. I can call them the twins. They work for FedEx. Yo, uh, give me a room. Give me a. Uh, but I'm their parent, so I lead by example. I got my CDL. I'm starting in the post office. I got my uh, gaming license for the casino. I got my ref license. I got so I try to show them, rather than telling them. Right. So anything I'm doing, I'm trying to lead by example. And you are a humble person in nature. So how do you? I don't. I can't say. I can't use the word humble because you are already humble. But I'm saying, how do you swallow your pride to? teach them these lessons without getting in your feelings because we do get in our feelings as men we have our ego yeah. we, we 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 overthink things just like everybody else we're normal we're human how do you set that aside just to teach them the lesson that because you may not even know what you're going through you don't know what you're going through yet while you're going through it you know what i mean yeah um so so what i try to do is not react you know how you everybody reacts to something you know what i'm saying so Oh man, I can't even remember the last time I cried. Like when my mom's passed, it hit me hard. Like I, uh, I cried and cried and cried and cried, but I didn't really grasp of what I was crying for. I know I was crying because she wasn't. You had to here. cry. You cried because you knew it was what you had to do. Yeah, but I wasn't a feeling cry. You know, like I wasn't. I wasn't angry. I wasn't upset. I wasn't. You know what I'm saying. And like shout you out said, to you went blank. Yeah, sh- I'm still, I'm still, but I'm shout still. Out to- shout out to my sister. <clears throat> she hold it down. I How many siblings it, you got? I got. Well, by my mother, it's me, my sister, and my brother Joanna. Shout out Joanna. Shout out my big brother Al. And I got for my father, I got a little brother. Joanna was the sister I met at the, at the event. At the event. No, she wasn't here. Oh. Okay. That's 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 homegirl sister. Okay, that's, okay. That's nah, cause she introduced herself as sister. Yeah. I'm I'm Weezy's sister. Yeah, I'm like that's right, homegirl right. sister. That's homegirl. Shout out Monique. Yeah. That's homegirl sister. But my actual sister name is Joanna. She in Brooklyn right now. Like, uh, shout out my little cousin Lane. Still got family in the trenches over there. Everybody. I'm not, me and my cousin Ant. Shout out Ant. He here. Only me and my cousin. Is here. Like, when they see this, they gonna bug out. Like, why? What do you mean you home? Like, what do you? My sister, I could. Why you ain't come to me? Why you don't go? My brother, yo, what you doing? You bugging. My little brother, I actually, that's why I came. He down south. I actually stood a month with him. Mm -hmm. Just because I knew nobody was there. I just needed my space and whatever. But while I'm down there, I'm filling out applications. I'm doing this. The post office hit me. Right? I told, I ain't even telling him. I was like, yo, I'm out. He said, where you going? I'm going back to PA. Like, where you going to stay? I said, don't worry about it. I'm good. So uh, I get here. Go to the post office. I do my thing. Right now, I'm in training. So, Monday, I go back to training for three more days. Then I should be in Lebanon, right here in Lebanon, post office. Right? I'm making it work. I'm not complaining. The bus go to Harrisburg. I get off the bus. I walk up maybe a mile or two to the, the post office. Finish with that. Walk right back to the bus. Wait for the bus to come. Then I just continue my day. Like, I'm not tripping. I'm not. Worrying about how I'm going to eat or how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do that. Because I know once I get my ducks in a row, it's lit for me. Like, I'm not. And then I won't have to be like, I depended on somebody. Not saying, this is what I hate about people, right? Everybody needs somebody. Mm -hmm. But they won't admit it. Right? Oh, I don't need nobody. I'm going to do it by myself. You can't live life like that. You can't. It's impossible. For your kid's sake, because my kid might be your kid friend, right? And want to come over. And I might be like, nah, because I don't need you. What? How is that working for your kid? Bro, I think about that shit all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people who are still carrying those old, like, beasts from when they were children. Yeah, and now right. they have their own children. And they're still in the same town. And you're still beefing with the same people. And your kids are friends because they don't know what the fuck beef means. Nothing. Or, or how about this? Your daughter, my daughter, get with your son. Yo, and then you could <laughs> tell you, and then you're gonna ruin your your baby's life 
and break their heart and then ruin your relationship yeah. with your baby because you're stubborn? Yeah, people, it's just like, I don't buy, so, so I don't buy the, like, I don't need this person. You might not need them financially, but how about a helping hand or you might need your car pushed or you might that, need... That term, that term, it takes a village. It isn't only for kids. Yes, yeah, for everybody. We all grew up in villages. Our ancestors grew up in villages of uh, of up to 200 people. We're not supposed to know everybody, but we're supposed to have our own little tribe and our own little group that helps nurture and raise us to be better. We got the hunters. We got the, 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 the wives to nurture the kids. We got the kids to, you know what I mean? We got, everybody has their role. It's a team. That's why, I think that's why you like basketball so much because you could play your role and everybody else and expect and set your expectations for everybody else to play their role. And if they don't, you can nurture them into the role that they need to play. Yeah. But at the end of the day, y'all still working towards the common goal. Like I said, I always try to, I'm not going to try to tell you to do something if I ain't do it. Right. Like if I ain't. I live by that. If I ain't, if I don't feel a pain, like I know the stove is hot. I'm not going to tell you not to touch it because you got to learn for yourself. But if I go touch it, now you see I'm burnt. Why would you go do the same thing? You know what I'm saying? So I try to I try to show and lead by example. And I try to, with the coaching, I try to get everybody a freeway. So if I had a basketball team right now, right, you might not be that good at basketball. I might be the best. But we both start in that 47 minutes or whatever the high school game. You got 47 minutes. I got 47 minutes. Now, if you can't hack it, of course I'm going to take two minutes away. Now you mm -hmm. got 45. Now you got 43. But you're seeing why I'm taking it. Now you can earn it back if you if you choose to. Now I'm saying I can't teach you hard and effort. That's in basketball. That's the only two things you can't be taught. What you probably can be taught, uh, effort if you keep showing somebody to run, right? But if I run this way, hard as fast, and you just jogging, and you just jogging, who you think gonna get it? A kid that's running hard and fast, hard and fast. So, did you learn your coaching style? Well. The good coaches coaching styles evolve as you grow. But what kind of coaching style did you choose at first? Because one of my biggest regrets was I was young when I first started coaching. I coached football. Um, okay. I was an all-star, all-county, played in an all-star uh, game and all that here for 11 and high. <coughs> Graduated at 17 years old. Um, at 20 years old, found out I was having my first kid. Three weeks after he was born, I was coaching in my first football game. First varsity, and I, I was the freshman offensive line and defensive coordinator, and then I help out with the offensive line on Friday nights. So three weeks after I had my first son, I'm coaching a high school football game. So my dreams are already coming true. Yeah. The problem was my mindset. I was still young. I was still fresh out of high school, plus losing my mom, so I was stuck in my ways, you know what I mean? I was still lost in the world, but I had the opportunity of a lifetime, and I did it for five years. And throughout the five years, I grew. But going into it, I was so hard-headed and old school, quote unquote. I was trying to coach the way I was coached, okay. not realizing that not every kid. I get that can handle that. Yeah, not every kid can handle that. I handle that because that's who I am. I'm strong and I'm hard-headed like that, and I need to be, I need to be reprimanded for my for my mistakes. Uh -huh. Other kids don't like that. You need to baby them through it. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many kids I made quit, bro? I made my own little brother quit. My own little brother played offensive line for me his freshman year and quit <laughs> because I was not giving in to nobody. We're yeah. going to do it my way or it's the highway. And that was my fault. And that's my biggest regret of coaching. And if I can go back and do it all again, I would be more empathetic and sympathetic with the kids. But that's something I evolved into. Yeah, yeah. With me, with me I would say shout out my junior high school coach. His name was Mr. Shelton, right? So uh, old school dude. But he gave us the freedom to be us. So my whole time in junior high school, we won. From sixth grade to eighth grade, we won all the chips. You know what I'm saying? So the way he coached us is he gave us energy. Like, when we did something good, he was excited for us. When we did something bad, he was equally as hard on us, right? So what I took from him is the excitement, the excitement part of the game. Ah, if I make you happy, you know what I'm saying, and it feel happy, you're going to want to do Right? If I feed you the ball and you score and, and I hype you, you up, happy. So I, I mean, boom! Right? Now I know you're gonna come down and set that pick harder for me. You're and... gonna do what I need you to do. Now, when you did, when you did something wrong, I think this is what the streets streets showed me, right? 
So the no snitching type mentality. So when you did something wrong, I would approach you, but I would approach you like, yo. On some one to one shit. Yeah, you just did five turnovers. Tell me why I should keep you in if you keep doing a mistake. It's something you do once, maybe twice. Five times, it can't be a mistake. It's like you purposely want to do this. This is the conversation. So, And I don't need you to stand there and just look at me. I need you to respond. I need you to say something. If you don't understand, tell me you don't understand so I can put it in a different way. And kids relate to that. Now I'm saying? I'm not screaming at you. I'm just telling you a mistake is something once or twice. When you do it five times, it's no longer a mistake, my God. Like, know what I'm saying? And I think with me is having my son so early, I get the I get to learn from them. Like glizzies and <laughs> all the you stay, you get to stay young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So with, with them, right? Cause I'll ask them, I'll kick it with only only thing I ask every kid, even my kid, is don't lie to me. Because I can't help you if you're lying to me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So if you come to me and you lie to me and I go approach the situation. If I'm defending you, you, I look like an asshole now yeah, because you, you lied to me. And I'm trying to defend you. Of course, I'm going to be mad. Of course, I'm going to be upset. But we can figure this out together and get through it. But if you lie to me, it's just all bets off. And I always tell I, my kid I can't stay upset forever. Yeah. And if, you, if I feel you lie to me and I done went to bat for you, I can't deal with you no more. Yeah. But... That's why, shout out to my brother Swag. Even though I know you mad at me, we'll get over it. Shout out to my brother Swag. What we'll do is, right, so say we coach it. Say I'm real hard. Like you said, you real hard. Swag would be the guy. Hit me alone with this, man. Good cop, you know, bad cop. And that was my man Cam. I don't know if you met him yet. My my man Cam Gill, uh -huh. he's a few years older than me, and he was an all-state wrestler, all that. Him and his brothers were, like, all one year apart, so they were in the newspapers for wrestling and all that okay. shit. They came in and they changed the wrestling um, the program at Lebanon High and got these kids to go states and all that. Okay. That's how good of coaches they are. Mm -hmm. But when Cam, when I got hired, Cam got hired as well, and he was the offensive guy. Okay. And when he would see me wild out and go crazy, he pulled the kid aside like, yo, you know he's just talking to you like that because he cares about you, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll pull me aside and tell me where I was wrong. Yep, so yo, you listen, it's cool that you, that's your coaching style, all that. This is how we grew up, whatever. But these kids, they're different. So throughout the yeah. five years, he was molding me and building me into the man that I was supposed to become. Yeah. I didn't get the opportunity to keep coaching, but now he's in an opportunity to get a bigger coaching job. And he's always like, yo, be ready. Yo, yeah. be ready. Because cause he, he built me into the coach that he needed me to be so he could be like, yo, you're on the staff now. Yeah. That's like, that's like in the a, in a, in a hood. Shout out, this is a big, big shout out. And I don't know if you know this, but now when you see this, <laughs> you will know. Shout out to my big, big homie. His name is Pete. We call him Maze. We call him Guns. We call him a lot of things, but he know who he is. Shout out to Pete, you know what I mean? Without you, I don't think I'll be the man I am, the father I am, the made it in the streets without you, because the first day I met you, when you approached me and told me, if I don't get the F out of here, you're going to slap me, none of this could be possible. Because I thought I was I thought I thought was him. Like, I was little. I know how to fight. I purchased my first joint. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't tell me nothing. I was I was, thought I was him at 13. Nobody. I met him, pulled me to the side, threatened my life, slapped me. Whatever he needed to do to get through to me, he got through to me. And I don't think I ever thanked them to just now. Like, I'm really realized, like, you made me to who I, you was my pops. Like, know what I'm saying? Shout out to June, too. I think too. you need to give that man a call. Yeah, I, that's my guy. You give that man a call when you get a chance. That's dude. my guy. Like, he made me a thousand. Him and June, they made me a thousand. Even though they didn't want me to do what I was doing, they supported everything I did. So, so let me give you a quick story about Pete. One day... I'm in a hood. I'm doing whatever I'm doing, and and somebody approached me. Let me ask before you go. What was your hustle? Yeah. Uh, crack. All right. That's it. Yeah. Abby. You grew up in the '90s in New York. Yeah. '90s, That's early it. 2000s. Yeah, I was. Uh, so from '92, I would say from '92, '93, all the way to maybe 2004. All right. I was. Bummed. We'll get to that era then. Yeah. But go ahead. Right. So. So, mind you, I'm still basketball night. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm out of it. Like, everybody know me for basketball. 
but that was a good thing. So even the fiends, they knew. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I ain't supposed to be out. They got to be keeping it straight. Yeah. I ain't supposed to be out. Don't let nobody know that Weezy's out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is everybody who used to get money in the daytime had to get tired sometimes. So while they they doing their number, I'm having a game. I'm showering. I'm eating. Remember I told you my mom was on drugs. Mm -hmm. She would be out or she. So three, four in the morning, I'm pitching. Nobody really seeing me. I'm eating I money everywhere, whatever I wanted, I needed, I got it. So the guy Pete sees me. Come here. I'm going to this band too low. What are you going to do with me? I, ain't, I mean, I told you I was mm-hmm. before the joint. You thought yeah. it was too good, yeah. He grabbed me. Yo, what you doing? Yo, you need to be out. Let me talk to you. So he kicking it with me. You didn't even think about upping that shit. You just. Nah. Like, because he, he said, let me talk to you. Damn, all right. You know what shit, I'm saying? Yeah. So, so what I did. Uh, let me listen. That's yeah. slapping sense to the nigga. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, uh, let me listen to what you know what I mean? So he kicks it with me. He tells me, you not doing this no more. I know you are. You play basketball. What I got to do to keep you to play basketball? I told him, I said, yo, my mom, I barely have food. I got a little sister. My my brother had got locked up. Mm. Uh, he did six years for armed robbery, trying to feed him. You know what I'm saying? So he get pinched. That's how I hus- began hustling, really. He get pinched. I tell I tells Pete this. He like, all right, so this is what I'm going to do for you. Goes in the pocket. You no longer in the game. Give me bread. Because that's what I'm telling him I need, right? Give me bread. Uh-uh-uh. All right. Go play basketball. So now I'm playing basketball. I don't got to worry about how I'm going to feed my sister. She going, know what I'm saying? She going to do whatever I give her bread. So I meet the guy, his which is his friend is June. I, June lives in my building, like know what I'm saying mm-hmm. he get money too or whatever. He gets money. He he sh- he really schooled me how to do and do everything. Know what I'm saying so. They both had a big part in my life. So what Pete is, he got all the fly cars. He got all the joints, and he getting whatever he need to do. Know what I'm saying he tells me all I got to do is play ball, and I'm good. Mm-hmm. But I do go play ball, trying to see if testing his jaw. Yo, I got a game on here. Yeah, all right, I'm out the way. So now I tell him, yo, I don't got a way to get there. Give me the keys to the car. Chick, chick. <laughs> 14. I'm 14 and 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 uh, and the new Benzes with rims. Driving with two feet. <laughs> oh, <I'm> gonna... <laughs> Let me tell you the story about. Shout out my brother Stom. <laughs> Driving with two feet. Stom, shout out my brother Stom. So me and Stom the same age, right? Mm-hmm. Stom, before me, he in the he in the, he already deep deep. They steals a car. He pulls up around my yo, what, what you doing? I'm like, nah, what you doing? He like, yo, get in. I'm like, nah, let me drive. He like, you know how to drive? I'm like, yeah. He like, all right. So he give me the keys. We get in. Ugh. Mind you, I get in, I don't know what the fuck. Put both my feet on the joint. <laughs> Start the car already started. I puts it, uh, right? I'm just guessing. I'm like, D must mean drive. So I, goes in D. I let off both the shit. The car start moving. I'll get nervous. I push both of them. <laughs> it's a pose like this. We get stuck. Boom! He hits his, hits his forehead on the joint. He leaking. He like, I'm like, yo, you all right? He like, yeah. I'm like, you sure? He like, why? Before the blood could get to like, right? I'm like, yo, you bleeding. I thought that was going to end our friendship right there. I thought he was going to get out and be like, yo, let's fight. He like, I thought you fucking said you know how to drive. <laughs> uh, I said, if I told you I didn't, would you let me drive? He looked at me. He said, you right. But nah, look, I'm good. <laughs> now look at his dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> my nigga was sick at me. Shout out my brother Stop. Uh, that nigga let me drive. Ever since then, I ain't looked back, boy. But yeah, so so now we in Marcy. Like I said, my man Pete, my big homie, my pops, my brother, my big brother. He he let me draw the whips, and from there, I was pretty much the man. And in, in my time now, granted, you know you got all the thugs. And shout out my guy Ainge. Shout out Mouse. Shout out. Mouse, other mouse, two mouse, my brother, God bless the dead, Kels. Uh, shout out G, shout out, it's a millionaire. Shout out Rose, shout out Black, shout out everybody. Now I'm saying the whole Marcy. 
Y'all know it is. It's, shout out my bro, Face, hold your head. He just uh, blew trout in the Fed joints. We gonna get through that, bro. I'm still here. I'm never gonna leave you, no matter what. I know you can't do for me, but I could do for you. Know what I'm saying? I'ma hold it down. You already know. Shout out Louis. Shout out everybody. Shout out even the even the dudes that might not like me, but you gotta like me. Shout out y'all too. Know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at none of y'all. Grow up. I'm a grown man. Whatever problems we had, I don't have problems with y'all. Now, if y'all wanna have problems with me, cool. That's cool. I'm not mad. Y'all know I know everybody and everybody and they get handled accordingly. But we don't need to go there. So when y'all see this video, I have no problem with anyone. I got bigger me. problems to worry about than y'all. Yeah, I I got I wanna raise my kids and and help other but I might help your kid. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Spalding. Uh me and my guy Spalden. We got some amazing things coming up for the new year. Uh, pretty much helping y'all kids. So how'd help. You, how'd you get together with him? Spalding. I knew Spalding since he was a little guy. Since he was, I helped train Spalding. What year you move out here? I moved out here in '03. All right. So let's get let's go back to '92. Then you said '92 to '04. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you out in the streets. I'm getting and money. this is this is prime. Like hip hop was just reaching the pinnacle of what we know it as these days uh, my generation because i'm i'm 29 yeah so, so we, you grew up with hip-hop you grew up with, with, with rap so we we lit mind you mind you i told you jay-z best friend tata mm -hmm. his his little brother is my guy so we know damn near half of all the songs before they come out so remember when jay did a song with dmx uh money cash hoes mm -hmm. we in in the hallways in our school Laughing that shit first. Yeah, nobody, we singing it. Uh, uh, they looking at us like, what's this? Like, cause we, you know, he get it. Yo boy, look what I got. Uh, we doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, So high school, my high school, shout out to 297. That was the public school. Everybody, if you from Marcy, Tonkin, Sumner, you went to 297 or 59, then you ended up in 33 or 71, right? So 33 is, if it had a high school, all the hood niggas will graduate. <laughs> For all of you that don't know, like New York lingo, New York, uh, oh yeah, yeah, New York oh, math, yeah, New forgot. York taxes, <laughs> New York, all of that. I forgot PS, about that. PS means public school. Yeah, public school. And then they label they label by numbers. Yeah. And then IS 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 is, is, is the middle schools. Okay. I call it middle schools. Yeah. So IS is the middle school, and high school is the high school. So I went to two ninety seven PS two ninety seven. IS33, and I went to Eastern. Uh, first, I went to New Nutri. Shout out my guy, Darius. I had a, uh, from middle school, I told you I was nice. I had a, a scholarship to high school from middle school or the junior high school, right? So it was to New Nutri. Mind you, my first, I want to say three days to this high school, it's in Coney Island. Mm -hmm. I'm going there. I'm trying to get up with my mans. So I ain't get over. I took the train there by myself. It's Italian dude. It's Italian dude that go to the school. Mind mm. you, I think I'm I'm tough. And this is back in when Italians yeah. was Italians. This '95. Yeah, this so, is when Italians are still active. I'm thinking I'm tough. Italian dude walking right next to me. I'm walking. We walking. Yeah. Like, oh, you going to my school? Pay him no mind. I said you going to my school, Mooley. Mind you, I only you only hear Mooley on TV. I'm mm -hmm. like, who are you talking to? Man, I don't see, say one more thing. I'm snuffing him. He said, Yo, I know you hear me. I rocked him, blew him. I'm not knowing he with 45 other people. <laughs> His whole family in the hallway. Oh, no, we ain't even get, <laughs> we ain't even get to the school yet. Uh oh shit. He had his whole family on the block. Uh, when I say they chased me for about a good 12 blocks, mm -hmm. my nigga, I, if they would have caught me. They would have whooped my ass. Good thing he was fast, huh? What? Super fast. <laughs> I blew on him. They chill. So I'm high. and all you see his footsteps. I tell my mom. Why I tell my mom? My brother's still in high school. He in 12th grade. Uh, my, my older brother, Al. Shout out to Al. He, I'm 42. He's 45 right now. 42. Yeah, he about 45 right now. So he only three years. So he in his last year of high school. You going to high school with your brother? Eh. 
she takes me out of the high school I got a scholarship to play ball at and puts me in my zone school. Now I get to my zone school, my brother, all them there. Well, I don't know why my mother did that. First day in there, I'm like, yo, this is my building. <laughs> Forget the school. This is my building. You know what I'm saying? So all my brother friends looking at me crazy. All my friends go there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm lit. Shout out to my brother Digger. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was automatically comfortable. First day I go in there, I don't go to class. I go to gym. The whole day, telling niggas that this is our... So I got my little... Me, my mans, it's probably like 20 of us in this section. Then it's my brother and them. Then, you know, they seen it, so they deep. I tell my mans, we going to pop on all of them. <laughs> they like, what you mean? I'm like, yo, I'm going to go snuff to it. You going to pick a fight with your brother's crew, bro? So they can know <laughs> that I ain't playing. <laughs> I need them to know. You're the definition of, it's a good thing you didn't go to jail because Yo. you would have punched the first big dude you see. But look, I I told you I always thought. Mm. I'm like, my brother not letting his friends beat me up. I'm waiting until he with them. So when I snuff them, they got to be like, Yo, get your little brother. Like, know what I'm saying? Mm. But they know I'm I'm wild enough that I'm going, I don't care what my brother say. I know he's going to beat me up. I already know he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> I already know this. I'm willing to sacrifice the ass with it. To let them know if y'all ain't down with me, y'all, woo. Right. But I only had to snuff like two of them. And then they knew. They was like, we'll help you anyway. But mind you, so the school I went to is full of Puerto Ricans, blacks. Just us. It's blacks and Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans had the building smashed. Here I go. If I can get these Spanish niggas down with me. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get these Spanish niggas down with me, I'm lit. Always plotting. But before I plot, my man, one of my mans in the lunchroom with two of my, well, it's two of my mans in the lunchroom. Shout out to Kevin Digger. They in there, and one of the poppies try to pop on them. So my man Digger snuffs one of them. So now it's all of us rolling. But I'm looking for the one who telling niggas, yo, uh, uh, and I see him. <laughs> Whatever he's saying, I see him. I makes him chase me up the stairs to the second floor. <laughs> But my brother, best friend, Tiger, shout out to Tiger. He's Spanish. Mm. He runs behind me. So I'm like, yo, Tiger, tell him I want to talk. I don't want no smoke. Tiger talk to him. Know what I mean? I'm like, yo, can you, you see how many of y'all it is? You see how many of us it is? <laughs> if we put our heads together, we can. This building is us. <laughs> but these poppies had spike bats, mm. which, yo, they was trying to kill us. Yeah. Like, literally, I ain't, they we come, just want to fight. They come from an island where they want to kill each other, bro. Yo. Imagine. Yo, I didn't know it was so serious that they wanted to, like, <laughs> hurt us. I'm thinking we just fighting. So I give a poppy. He like, poppy, you know, you know, you right. And we, uh, so once me and him became fool, we, we did it. All that. We was so lit. And then we had the security guard. Because mind you, poppy had his, right? Mm-hmm. My man, aunt was the security guard. I ain't gonna say your name because I might get in trouble. But get the security guard. He got the security guard. We running the whole building. I don't know how many of y'all can say y'all actually ran your high school. We ran our high school. I never went to. <laughs> I never went to English, and I never went to to uh, social studies. Shout out to Mr. McLaughlin and Miss Johnson. But I played ball. But I can't play. I can't play if they didn't pass mm-hmm. me. Right? So we had the security guard kick it with them. Yeah. I, they gave me 65, 65, both of them. So I would be able to play. Enough to pass, enough yeah, to play. Yeah, enough to play. So my first game, I dedicated to the teachers. You know what I'm saying? My first game, I had 23 and 11. First game, uh, I'm in a newspaper. I'm lit. I show my moms. I show them. They hype. Now the school really getting behind me. Mm-hmm. Now we got to, they figure we got a star on their hands. All through high school, I killed. You know what I'm saying? All the games was packed. Every game. We had a crackhead as a coach. <laughs> he ain't... So I ain't really had to listen to him. Oh, man. We was skies the How you knew he was a crackhead coach? Because he would just disappear. And you know, I told you I used to get money. He would come back with the same <laughs> deep face as the, the fiends in the hood. He said, context clues, nigga. Yo. Son, like, I'm like, son, our coach is a fiend. We had a coach that there was rumors of that he was a cokehead. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace to this man. But that he was a cokehead. And he used to have the smelliest breath, bro. 
So he would grab you by his face mask. And he had this little like half a finger. It was just like a a, a nail sticking out. It's like a nub with a nail sticking out. So he would grab you with that hand and pull you close and just speak right directly into your nose with that little finger pointing at you, bro. It was the worst 15 to 20 seconds of your life, but you remember it still. You remember it your whole life. If I if I called my man Jed right now and asked him about coach, he would tell you, bro, because he he just happened to be the linebackers coach, and my boy Jed played middle linebacker. Jed's as big as you, led the team in, in tackles, with with coming off of a torn ACL that that summer going into our senior year. That's what's up. That's dope. I had 150 plus tackles at, at standing at five two, 165 pounds playing linebacker. That's tough. That's that's tough. I mean, the environment make you. He was hungry. He was more hungry than everybody else. See, where I come from, uh, basketball, basketball, baseball. Shout out to my my son's grandfather. So this guy's name we we everybody know him as Mr. Monroe, mm. right? Black old guy in the projects, right? Still give you a scenario. <coughs> Black old guy in the projects. Try to text my kids, tell them to shut up. Yeah, They're it's, mad loud it's out cool. there. It's, uh, so he about around this time, ninety six, ninety seven. He Maybe I want to say 55, 60. Black dude in the projects. But I told you, Marcy, everybody get money, they doing stuff. He can literally go, you, 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 come on. And where we go is to a baseball field. Gangsters, everybody in this baseball field, listen to the old, I mean, this guy had to win about, he had to win about 20, 30 hood. Taking kids that don't know nothing about baseball, just focus on baseball. I mean, I told you we play basketball, football. But he go, you, 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 you. We all going to play baseball. You going. Because what, <laughs> what black old dudes you know, know what I mean? That's the respect he had in the hood. Everybody go play baseball. I mean, he taking us everywhere. I mean, I wasn't nice, but I wasn't trash. I get on base, and I was fast. So I used to be stealing bases for everybody. Mm. We punching people. We getting football numbers <laughs> in baseball. 36 to 2. We, we wild enough. Nanju, we don't know what we doing. We just hit it. Some of us was nice. Some mm-hmm. of them was nice. I ain't gonna front. They knew when they got up, they cracking home runs. Know what I'm saying? They nice. Me, I'm like, man, I ain't. So I used to try to duck them because I don't want to play baseball. It's boring. Still. Right. I was like, <laughs> but when he came around, everybody in Marcy. What knows position him. did you play in baseball? Second base. Second base? Because I was fast. Like, it hit. I run, I throw it. Uh, like, I know how to play everything. Every sport, any sport. Know what I'm saying? It is all, it is what it is. All right. 